So let me ask you a question, my sister, my brother. So while you've been sick, you know, uh, have you been, when you when you able to, have you been like watching videos, studying? Yeah, when they let me, when they let me. Uh, when they let you? Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, do you have so have you had any chance to like yeah, that's um, on Facebook. You be on Facebook? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> well, Lord's will, um, because I know sick and cell, I heard it's, it's, a, it's a very serious condition. It's very painful. So I can only, I can only imagine also being pregnant. But when you get the opportunity, Lord's will, to be in contact with us, keep watching, congregate, because these type of things, the Lord is the only one that can help them. Yeah, you go to the physician, but the physician can only do so much if the Lord don't allow it. Oh, wow. yeah. I think it's um, so you think? Yeah. Now listen to this, my sister, right? James chapter 5, verse 14. Is any sick among you? So if anybody's sick among us, you haven't been to the congregation, but you're sick, right? So a lot of times, a lot of our people in the congregation over get sick. Some people got the, got the coronavirus. And, and, and other other people also have certain other secrets. So sometimes they're not able to come again. So I do comprehend it. Let him call for the elders of the church okay. and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. So this is the point when you get a chance to start coming to the congregation. So what? So the elders, we can pray for you. So you're not on this fight on your own. So when, you know, the, the, the power of prayer is, is, is a, it's more powerful than what we think. So the Lord could what? Help you in this condition, help you in this pregnancy. So this is the thing when you get a chance, come to the school whenever you're able, physically able to. You understand that? Now give me, um, let me ask you a quick question because I'm like, it's been a while. Remember, where the rest of your children at? Sleep. They sleeping? Okay. Okay. So how, how far you are right now, my sister? Nine months? Okay, so be ready. The father, are you married? Not married? We were gonna get married, but he did some stupid stuff, so I had bounced. Had bounced. So you slept with the man before mm -hmm. you ended up getting pregnant. Yeah, I had a wet lot, baby. So you know the scripture tell give me um uh, give me Hebrews and then I want um uh, give me Hebrews first. This is the point and then my brother right here, where's your son going? Taking them okay, this is something he got to learn too. That guess what? Well, he don't be in this predicament. Because a lot of our people, we get plagued with this what? Single mother, single, you know, single parent home. And this is why a lot of our children end up becoming in crime and in gang because there's not a father around. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. This is the thing we got to have on our mind before we sleep. <clears throat> Before we get our urges, we want to start laying down. We got to start thinking about marriage. So when you go either meet the next husband in the future, guess what? The first thing you got to do, give me some rock six. We're going to finish this. Give me some rock six. You want to have to what? You have to first get yourself right and find a man, guess what? That's going to walk in the word of God. You just can't find somebody because he's cute, because he got money. That don't mean nothing. But there's plenty of people that got money might look good, but next thing you know, they're a demon. And next thing you know, you're in this predicament on your own. So rough, chapter 6 and verse 7. How old are you? 13. 13. You got any girlfriends? No? You know, according to the Bible, there's no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend. There's no dating when it comes to the Bible. This is why I want you. Give me Hebrews again. Hold this. This is also very particular for you, your sisters, or your siblings. Are you the oldest? You're the second oldest. How old is your, bro your brother? Yes. Sister, how old is your sister? 15. 15. But you're the oldest boy, right? So guess what? You got a big responsibility. That's right. Just ask the mayor, ask the boy, right? This, your father ain't around. You want to have, a, there's going to be burdens on you early in your life. That's unfortunate because my father's there, so I comprehend that. But my, but my daddy is in his yeah. life every day. He's like, in his life? Yeah. Well, that's what well hopefully he could give a good example and show him these videos yeah. so he could repent. Yeah, but while you're around, guess what you're going to do? When you grow up in this world, which is hard for us, guess what? You're going to have to what? Grow up fast. Because in this world, they're not going to have any pity on you. So there's no, uh, until you get to the age of 20, because the Bible says the age of 20, that's when you're a man. We're going to get a few things, but give me this Hebrews 13. 
The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. So you got to remember that. When you get of age, you got to think of <coughs> finding a wife. Not a girlfriend. A wife. And the bed undefiled. So when you get of age and it's time to what? Have sexual relationship with your wife. You are, it's okay with God. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Do you know what a whoremonger is? Do you know what that is? A whoremonger is a man that likes to sleep around. Just like we call our sisters, they like to call them hoes and you know all these other words. That's a whoremonger that likes to sleep around. So he said, these men that like to sleep around, and what? God will oh, judge. Whoremongers are who? Whoremonger, but whoremongers and adulterers. You know what's an adulterer? You know what adultery is? What is that, my brother? I just told you last night. Uh, Adultery. It is uh, messing around when you're not married. No. That's kind of it's messing around when you are married. Right. So when you're married, you see somebody sleep out, outside of their marriage, that's adultery. That's one of the commandments that God said I should not do. Give me now. I wanna I wanna get my young man right here. Give me uh get a job and I have a house. So, uh, but that's, but that's a couple of things you gotta do. When it's time for you to be on your own, you're gonna have a you're gonna need your own place, your own job. To what? To maintain a wife. You just can't be sleeping from being your mom's house and then have a girlfriend. So Rock chapter 29, verse 21. The chief thing for life is water. The chief things, the main thing for life is water, right? Because we need to drink. And bread, food. And clothing. You need clothing, right? You can't walk around <laughs> naked. And then house to cover shame. And a house to cover shame. These are the main things that we need in our life to live. That's what that's what God's saying. This one. Better is the life of a poor man. So it's better to have a life. Now ain't nothing wrong with having money. But it's right here saying it's better to be poor in a mean cottage. A mean cottage, what it's saying, a place that is busted. A place that it might be uh, a, a beat up. You know what I'm saying? You might have roaches here and there, you know what I'm saying? Little stays here and there. But it's better to have a beat up apartment, a beat up house, than delicate fare in another man's house. Then guess what? To be in somebody else's nice house where you got no say. Right. Could you imagine you stay in somebody else's house? They paying rent, you ain't doing nothing. You can't tell them nothing. You right. try to go to sleep, wake up early in the morning. Hey man, can you turn it down? You can't tell me nothing. I'm gonna be up until four in the morning. Too bad. You can't, you ain't got no say. So it's better to have your own spot. These are the things you gotta do as you get older. Before, when your time comes, these are the things you need to do. Have your own place. Now give me um, uh, that job, get to work. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse 10. This is what I'm giving you on checklists that you need to do as you get older. When you become a grown man, these are the things you need to do to check. Have my own, have my own place, clothing and all that, make a living. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So you need to work. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna be able to provide. So it's saying right here is that's why when you read in Sirach, it said it's better to be poor in a poor place, but you have your own thing. Right. You may have be eating a, uh, you know, a turkey sandwich, tuna sandwich, but guess what? It's yours. You're still eating. That's right. They're, some, they're trying to wait for somebody else to give you the scraps. Right. So these are things you gotta learn. But as a young man, you still, you say you what, 13? You still got a lot to learn. Give me uh, Proverbs 1, 10, and uh, verse 15. Because I know as a young man, in the life that we live in, the neighborhood, there's a lot of, uh, what you call it? Uh, bad peer pressure, peer pressure influence. Especially as a young man. Right. So this is what God commands us to do. One and ten. Proverbs chapter one, verse ten. My son, if sinners entice thee, if sinners, guess what? You're gonna have people that wanna what? Sell drugs, steal, do all types of wickedness, right? If if they try to come and put peer pressure on you, right? Consent thou not. Don't agree with them. Yeah, I'm down. All right, I'm, I'm good. Now I'm telling you, yo, be home. 
and you still leave, you try to follow them, don't do that. Let's go on that one. Yeah. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Guess what? Sometimes, how you, when he's talking about blood, that's talking about his violence coming after. Sometimes you're going to go steal, you might have to kill him, you might have to rob somebody, steal, stab him, right? Let us wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Because you know, when you're out there sneaking at night, they waiting to see who's alone, who's weak. Like they might see your mother pregnant on her own. In this mean street, they might take advantage of her. She can't fight, she can't do nothing. God forbid, right? These were the things that happened in our neighborhood. So when you hear stuff like that, you're not supposed to follow that. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole, as, as those that go down into the pit. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thou foot from their path. Saying, when you see those type of groups, you see the type of pit pressure, bro, they ain't your friends. Refrain your foot, that means goes the opposite way. These are the type of things. It's gonna be hard as a young man. This is why we pray that your mom get healthy enough that you can come, you can be around what? Be brothers around your age. You can have uh, other men to show you the right way how to walk. Because it's gonna be hard. Because I know I can tell you, you may say, okay, cool. But I know when you leave, you on your own. So I know it ain't easy. Because look, a lot of us, we was your age. We didn't grow up, we wasn't just born to grow up. All of us was 13 one time. So we know it's hard out there. Listen, learn, Just I know our people, our young man, I know you ain't dumb. I know you're smart. I know you're smart. This neighborhood, this world, is gonna act like you dumb and we stupid, we ain't stupid. We the smartest people in the world. You understand that? We about to close it out. Give me the last scripture. Um, Deuteronomy 7 and 6 for the brother, and then back to 26. Always have that thing in your mind. No matter what condition you're in, no matter if we poor, we going through hell, God still loves you more than everybody else, or the other nation. So right. always remember that. No matter how low you get, always remember God is for you. But you gotta do God's commandments. Right. So that's scripture for you to keep in your mind. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven, verse six. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. So us, the black Hispanic Native American, he said we are holy people. When you say something holy, that's special. That's separate. So yes. God separated us from all the other nations. So yes, say right. God took us for himself only. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. You imagine that? God, he made all the nations. He made everybody. But he said, I choose this people. God himself chose you and your mother, your brother, all of them. He chose us to be a special people unto himself. That's God. That's the real God. God has a, a particular people. He said unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So even as you round, even you living in the hood, not making a lot of money, guess what? You still more special than any billionaire in the world. That's all the smart. Chinese, all the uh, so-called white people, Japanese, God loves you more than them. They right. could be rich and right. be in power. That's You're right. still more special to him. Right. That's right. But remember, when you love somebody, you gotta, just like you respect, you gotta respect your parents, you gotta respect our Heavenly Father. That's right. So watch the videos, those will come to the school. You understand? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth